Hello, dear friends at Salem. Welcome to our weekly message. Uh, we've just followed Labor Day weekend. Hope you had a good weekend. Hope we are able to get some rest and relaxation. Uh, we had a great service on Sunday, and I wore my Tanzanian shirt to remind me of my friends that were uh, traveling from Tanzania. Some of them I've known for quite some time, and good to see them back and worship. Uh, Nixon, uh, one of our attendees, he will be coming to preach. And uh, you, you might wonder how he got that name Nixon. And yes, he was named after a American, an American president. And uh, he kind of told the story about that uh, many years ago when I saw him. Of course, his name's always easy for me to remember. Um, got some things coming up on our calendar. Uh, the Owls are going to be going on the Jonathan Paddleford, if you're interested in doing that. Uh, shoot a text or a uh, email to the church office or uh, talk to any of the members of the Owls and they can uh, tell you where to sign up. Uh, choir rehearsals are beginning again today, so I uh, hope to see you at choir rehearsals uh, this uh, evening and Feed My Starving Children will be our first faith formation event. It's on on Wednesday, and so uh, if you're interested in going to that, uh, you can sign up or just drop your name with uh, Michelle in the office and we can figure out how to get you signed up for that. I'd love to have you come along. Uh, they've opened that up again, so it's nice to be able to serve in that capacity. Uh, thanks for all of you wearing masks in church on Sunday. I know it's not at the com most comfortable thing. Luckily, the weather's starting to cool off, so it's a little more comfortable. Uh, we will be having a new member gathering on Sunday. If we have anybody that's interested, we'll meet in the fireside room uh, and then uh, have a little conversation about Salem and becoming a member at Salem. So if you know folks that are interested, please tell me. Uh, also, the, the 12th is God's Work, Our Hands. The ELCA has been doing this for many, many years. Congregations do all kinds of different activities on that day. I hope you'll join us for our activity of making quilts for Project Home. Uh, it's not a very difficult thing to do. More hands, the better. I have, hope that you can join us on Sunday. So, we um, are moving to our text for Sunday. And I've decided to um, skip the gospel for preaching on and go right to James, our epistle text. By the way, epistle means teaching in the Greek language. And uh, that is what the subject of our uh, story is from James as well. And those of you who have read James will know that he can become a quite legalistic. Uh, but there is some grace and gospel in his words as well. And uh, this one this one is one I've uh, read many times, different places, and it's called The Tongue. And I'm going to read from the uh, Contemporary English Version. So I uh, hope that you enjoy a different version than our NRSV in this case. So it's in chapter 3, starts at the first verse. My friends, he begins, we should not all try to become teachers. In fact, teachers will be judged more strictly than others. Uh, this is an interesting way to start off uh, a text with a warning. And uh, uh, sometimes, you know, when we're recruiting Sunday school teachers or faith formation teachers, we read this and go, uh oh, we're in really, really deep trouble. Um, but I can assure you that as teachers, uh, you, will, you will be trained well uh, by the leaders, and um, I hope that you will endeavor in that. But not everybody's a teacher. As we begin school this week for many of our students, I have one grandson who began two weeks ago. He's out in Virginia. My other grandson up in Andover, they just began uh, on Tuesday, and I got to watch him go on the bus uh, through Zoom. Uh, that's... Uh, uh, kind of a fun thing to do now that we've learned how to do that. And I uh, got to talk to him a little bit too. And so this becomes a week we kind of focus on teachers and teaching. Uh, all of us do many wrong things, but if you can control your tongue, you are mature and able to control your whole body. By putting a bit in the mouth of a horse, we can turn the horse in different directions. By the way, the bit lands on their tongue. It takes strong winds to move a large sailing ship 
but a captain uses only a small rudder to make it go in any direction. Our tongues are small too, yet they brag about big things. It only takes a spark to start a forest fire. The tongue is like a spark. It is an evil power that dirties the rest of the body and sets a person's entire life on fire with flames that come from hell itself. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures can be tamed and have been tamed, but our tongues get out of control. They are restless and evil in always spreading deadly poison. My dear friends, with our tongues we speak both praises and curses. We praise our Lord and Father, and we curse people who were created to be like God. And isn't this right? Can clean water, clean water and dirty water both flow from the same spring? Can a fig tree produce olives or a grapevine produce figs? Does fresh water come from a well full of salt water? Um, first off, I think he kind of overstates the case uh, in, in the fact that the, the tongue being only evil, because he actually contradicts himself in the, the line on verse 9 when he says we speak both praises and curses. And so um, I'd like to look at this in terms of stewardship. Uh, we often think of stewardship in terms of money. Uh, we've talked about stewardship of the earth. We've talked about stu stewardship in all kinds of respects. Uh, I'd like to talk about stewardship in our words. Uh, a Lutheran pastor once wisely sp said, be a spendthrift when it comes to spending the money of words, because you can never overfill the emotional bank account. Uh, go into the red, be in debt with your words. Uh, that is good stewardship. Uh, may not be good stewardship of your money to be in debt, but the emotional bank account that you fill will pay dividends. Uh, just walk into a room and give somebody a compliment and see how they react. See how children react to compliments. Um, it's, a, it's a powerful word. And though our text today talks about it a lot from the negative standpoint, um, I encourage you to look at this from the positive standpoint, too. Uh, these can be a very potent uh, encouragement for people who are desperate to hear a good word, people who are thirsty for some encouragement, some spiritual refreshment. And so we will walk to Sunday in that desert being filled with the words of Christ, uh, and our tongues will not be parched, and maybe we will share them uh, as a good word as well. So anyway, that's enough of that. We will see you on Sunday, and uh, we'll talk about that a little more in detail and share that gospel of the tongue. So be still and know that the Lord is our God. Thanks for joining me this week.